Today we're going to look at The Walking Dead Zombie Hunter plug and play. This is by Jack Pacific and it came out in 2012. This plug and play requires the shotgun controller and it also requires the zombie receiver. So if you find this anywhere and it does not have both of them, don't even waste your time because you're not going to be able to play this. Now, even when you get everything aligned properly, um, it still isn't dead on and you kind of just have to work with the best that you have here. So this is actually officially licensed by AMC. It's official Walking Dead game. This game is actually called Zombie Hunter, which you wouldn't know from here. Uh, this is the first plug and play and review. Uh, today we're gonna be drinking a Boddington's Pub Ale while we're playing. Now the thing about Boddington's is there's instructions on the side. It says for best results, serve cold but not ice cold. They recommend 41 degrees. Carefully open can, pour ingredients in the glass. This is where I have uh, an objection to their uh, instructions here, which I will talk about in a second. And this is wait and watch the head settle on a perfect glass of Boddington's Pub Ale. Where this is carefully open, if you carefully open this thing or you open halfway, it explodes all over the place. So when you have a Boddington's, what you do is you just full open this thing. Just like that. Did you hear that? And it still kind of blew up a little bit. But if you do it any less than full, it's going to be blowing up all over the place. Let's have a nice pour here, and then we're going to begin the game. Anyway, let's start this. So here we have the story mode. We have the horde mode. We have the free play mode. Free play just lets you go back to any of the uh, acts and scenes that you've previously beat. I've previously beaten this game to do the review. Here's the horde mode. This is where you just pick um, the levels from the game, the river, cemetery, city, rooftop, etc. And you just play wave after wave after wave until you die. Although it says death is the only way out or is it? So I'm going to guess there is an end to the waves. Um, we can take a look at the options here, music, reload, you have the choice of manual or automatic. Um, you can calibrate, but the calibration here is a joke. And then story mode, uh, we are going to pick manual. Our name here will be, uh, we'll just do RIP. Cool, and then we're going to start the game. This game has three stages with multiple chapters. Um, you know, here we get, we actually get a narrative in this game, which is pretty cool. And uh, so here's act one, oh sorry, there's three, there's three acts where we have a uh, primary objective and a secondary objective. Here's the narrative, you pull the trigger to continue. It's been three days since the outbreak, three days since I've been on the run. Nearly out of provisions, ammunition, and here a deer snap. What the? They're here, here are some zombies. And then the game begins. The only way to kill the walkers is to shoot them in the head. So this is an on-rail shooter. One thing I do like about this game is that when you do kill them from getting a headshot, um, you will see green blood or green something splatter out the back of their head, which lets you know that they're actually dead. The game in general is a bit dark. I need to shoot open crates so I can get their contents. Right now we have the shotgun, and you actually pump, you know, the controller to to reload everything. You know, th this weapon has uh, six shots before you need to reload. There's also some that require only one shot. I like this game. I mean, is it amazing? No, not quite. But, I mean, I play quite a bit of plug and plays, and there's a lot that are way worse than this. So we're just going to take you through the entire game. There are also some zombies that take more hits than others, uh, as we'll see as we go. Uh, one thing I would have liked in this game is if you actually did a secondary objective, it would have been nice if they told you. Um, you. You see up in the top left hand corner it says dead on or sharpshooter or headshot or brain dead or whatever they happen to say. Okay. And that's nice, but it still would be nice if they actually told you if you, if and when you got the, uh, the secondary thing. Besides at the, you know, the card at the end of the game or at the end of the axe. This weapon, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, it has infinite ammo, so this is the kind of, this is the thing you always revert back to when you're done with all the special ammunition that you get. 
and sometimes we're going up and down and then sometimes we are going uh, side to side oops took my eye away from the screen for a second and you know this game does definitely get repetitive it's not you know there wasn't millions of dollars put into this game it's not like dead space extraction or um the Umbrella Chronicle games for the Wii, but it's still pretty enjoyable. I like the music. I like that there is a written, uh, illustrated narrative. Although sometimes it is really difficult to see what's going on here. Oh, come on. So that's what happens when you die. You get three shots, and you just continue from wherever you, you started the last uh, checkpoint. I try to reload after every shot if I can, only because later on in the game when, when things start going crazy, you want to have the maximum amount of shots possible at all times. And what the thing about this game is in between cutting, like from going from scene to scene, it kind of like stops for a second. And in that time where it stops, the music stops and you actually are not able to reload. So you can't just do it whenever you want. But I will say that when you get the, the first aid kits, they, they do fill up all your health, which is nice. Finally. God. Instead of just fill... Oh, yeah, that's fair. I had to throw in the Vela. Instead of just filling up one of the uh, crosses that actually fills up all of them. I mean, yeah, the, the backgrounds and everything are kind of bland, but, you know, it's The Walking Dead, and it's like the apocalypse, so why wouldn't it be? Why would it be all nice and bright and shiny and colorful and detailed? It wouldn't be. So right now my objective is just to get to, what did it say, the water? I can't remember what it said. Again, kind of just the same thing. No, not bad, not amazing. The one thing I do like about this game is it was, you know, it wasn't made by some huge, gigantic company. Uh, it was made by a group of, a small group of people, and it says that in the credits that they worked a long time on this and had a lot, a lot of late nights. And to me, that's kind of like the character of this game. And again, when the, with the green splatter is, is very helpful. Okay, so here we go, the river, we got to the river, that was the objective, hope this slows them down. And then here's our score, the walker scene, every civilian, uh, I don't know if you can see them on the ground because the game is very dark, but there'll be civilians crawling on the ground or doing whatever, and if you kill the zombie before it kills them, you get points. Uh, see, this is objective score is 3,500, but then the bonus score is 1,750, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be from getting the 10 headshots or not. Here we have the primary objective is find the shelter, and then the bonus objective is kill 15 walkers with the crossbow. This is act one, scene two. Uh, I need to find a place to rest and then a way out of the woods. It's not safe here anymore. I do, I really like the, the illustrated narrative here. You know, I think it gives it a lot of character. You know, it's, it's telling us a story, and I think that's pretty cool. I found this game at a yard sale for a couple bucks, but if you see this game and this interests you, oh, God. if you see this game and this interests you, uh, just make sure that when you get it, you get the receiver with with the shotgun, because if you don't have uh, both pieces, you actually can't play this game. And that's, that's another gripe that I have. I don't know if you just noticed that, but as soon as I killed the last zombie, there was a crate that I did not destroy, and it actually would not let me blow it up. It only gave me a couple seconds to get it, so it's kind of annoying um, that it does that. Right now, I just picked up the crossbow. The crossbow's dead. See, I just saved that lady. Now, here's the thing. I have eight shots with the crossbow, or I can get the assault rifle. But if I pick up the assault rifle, I lose this. And it's not like, you know, this only gives you a couple shots where the assault rifle gives you a lot more. But this is definitely, this definitely does more damage. And you can get, you know, double headshots or whatever. You can kill two with, uh, with one shot. Pro one problem with this is, um... 
you only get so many shots, you know, and it, it is one at a time. But it is it is more powerful, and so that's the uh, see I wanted that crate and I wasn't able to get it. And there's some zombies on the side that won't ever. Oops. Somehow didn't kill that person even though I missed 15 times. Okay, so now we got our health refilled and our ammo refilled. And we're just, there's, that, there's, there's different parts of this game, so. You see how I just got a double headshot? I don't know if you noticed it, but I got two with one. Like I just did it again. Unfortunately, that isn't an achievement. Just did it again. And I think that the arrow is really the only way to do this. Not saying you can't do it with other ones, but I mean, arrow seems to be the one that I get it with the most. And it definitely does more damage than the shotgun. And now I'm back to the shotgun if you look in the bottom right hand corner. You know, this this is a game that just kind of reminds me of like the old school arcade games. I mean, it's really it's obviously like not on the same level, and it's not amazing. Um, I also don't think that there was that much money put into this game. But it's fun for what it is. I mean, and even if you just, if you found this and you just wanted to play it for a night with some friends when you get drunk, I mean, it's still fun. I like the music in the background. It's very ominous music. And here is the end of scene two, act one, where we will end part one of uh, the playthrough of this plug and play and review. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep going with this and we're obviously going to beat it and then there'll be an evaluation at the end. And All right. Uh, stay nerdy. Peace out. Bye.